Hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play series of Torment Tides of Numenera. This is Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we ex continue to talk to the, uh, I don't know, actually remember the name of these guys, but they're really, really nasty and weird. Basically, I don't think they're human, I'm pretty sure they're not, um, but they share some, similarity, some, some similarities with us humans, I'm not really sure, I mean, they have male and female, and apparently they devour their own people because their world doesn't have anything, doesn't have vegetables, doesn't have anim animals, it just has them, so they eat each other to survive, and um, in order to preserve their uniqueness, I think they absorb their own souls or something it's I don't know it's it's kind of a mess really but we do have a lot of these things that I didn't look at before this push cart holds the emaciated corpse of a pauper his toes and fingers have been chewed to the bone the bed of this old push cart is stained with blood and other more unpleasant things a plump middle-aged woman lies upon the slab her head has been stripped of flesh her eyes placed neatly on the slab beside it why would I do that you recognize this corp as co corpse as Koro, the mercenary who tried to ambush you in the reef. His face is frozen in an expression of surprise, as if he can't quite believe that he's dead. Wait a minute, but that's not the guy that... So we killed Koro, but we left the corpse there. So they went and got the corpse? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> that's something that no, not doesn't usually happen in video games. Uh, what is this? This corpse has been partially eaten, gnawed by human teeth. The body cavity is splayed open, and most of the organs are gone. Oh, oh, oh that's yeah. We can't use the. We can use this. Let's first have a chat here with um, Kiyatawa. Do I need to talk to my guys, by the way? Yes, lad. Um, so how are you holding up, man? Oh, I'm fine, lad. I just hope you won't regret our friendship. Yeah, I know. I know about that. What about you, Alijern? Do you have anything for me? Mm -hmm. Nope. He's guarded eyes, huh? Okay, let's have a chat here with Kia Kiatawa. This woman watches you, measuring every step, every twitch of your hands, and yet there is no fear in her. Iron lines her spine and presses her mouth into a thin, even line. You take a wrong turn, she says, studying the nails on her right hand. Don't see many people down here for the light or the company. She steals a cautious glance at the hulking cultists nearby, then returns her gaze to you. You want something? Uh, how long have you been in the Dendra Ohur? That's, that's their name, yeah, the Dendra Ohur. Long enough, she says. Th thought I'd found a place I belonged. Guess I was wrong. How many false families until I find my true one, she thinks. Why don't you feel like you belong in, in here? I... <sighs> Never mind, I shouldn't have said anything. What was bothering you? Nothing. No offense, but I don't know you at all. Leave me alone, all right? Okay. What's bothering you? Okay. She doesn't. She doesn't say anything different. Okay. Let's see. Let's mess around with this corpse over here. A strong aroma of charred flesh rises from the dingy cloth over this corpse. Uh. Let's leave that for later. If I mess around with these with this thing, people, these guys might be kind of upset. So let's not do that. This corpse is, an, is a, uh, in a wretched state, its head and limbs crushed to, to a pulp with bits of wood and debris embedded in the skin. We got a guy here called Malay or Mallet. I, was, I, I will go with Mallet because a lot of these, uh, these names seem to be, or I guess some of the names in this game seem to be uh, words from every day that we have, uh, like, you know, we've found them before. The burly man sneers at you, flexing massive scarred hands that could easily encircle your throat. His tongue probes his, tongue probes his uh, stained, sharpened teeth, and a short, blood-stained club swings from a hook at, at his waist. So, uh, what are you doing out here? She will meet, he says, playing in the dark. He chuckles, long and low. Mallet, Tibir mutters a frozen grin. This numb slab beat his partner to death over two shins. And I'm the one who turned him in, he thinks. I can't trust him farther than you can throw him, or even push him. <laughs> yeah, well, if he's pretty big, you probably won't be able to throw him. So, um, tell me about the danger hold, I ask to this guy over here. I don't have to tell you nothing, he says, snorting. You ain't one of us. You ain't nothing. You ain't nobody, he says. He jerks his chin at the elderly man who stands nearby. You want a tour? You talk to Imbitu. I'm busy. So is he in charge? Yeah, and at his age, it better be. Really? Have you been part of the Dendro Hood for long? Nah, not that long. What sort of work did you do before? 
I broke stuff, he says, his eyes gleaming with dull humor. And don't think I don't, I don't recognize you, he adds, looking over at Tibir. I remember you, and what you did. Oh, what I did, Tibir says, scratching his jaw. What I did. Oh, you're talking about how I told everyone you killed your partner for less than because of a, a dinner? He smiles, but his eyes are cold. I'd do it again, and for free. Doesn't, char doesn't matter, Mallet shrugs. None of that stuff matters anymore. This is my place now. I don't do that anymore, he thinks. Not for revenge, anyway. Hmm, not, mur not much for conversation, are you? I ask. The way I see it, he drawls, is I don't know you. You ain't done anything for me, and we got nothing to talk about. Not now, anyway. So, uh, why should we? Well, you'll open up if we have something to talk about, right? Oh, yeah. You won't be able to shut me up. Uh, okay. So that might be something for the future. Huh. You can't tell me anything about the Dendro Hood? Well, nobody said uh, nothing about can't, he says, picking a tooth. The word is want. Maybe Imbitu will feel differently. Okay, well, I'll see you later then. Yeah, see you later. Okay. Imbitu, what are you, sir? At first glance, it would be easy to assume that this man is dying of some wasting disease or starvation. He's little more than a too tall skeleton. Too tall? I don't know what that is. I don't know that word. A uh, two-tall skeleton wrapped in translucent flesh and a tattered robe. His hands are essentially bony claws, and yet he beams at you, his sunken eyes glittering in with a suppressing la uh, suppressed laughter and feverish life. Keep your guard up around this one, says Alijern. He's, he murmurs at, at your side. Imbitu is sharp, very sharp. He's eaten a lot of very smart people. Imbitu smiles, his teeth are muddy brown. I know you, he says. So many eyes have lingered on that tattoo, that noble brow. He reaches for your forehead with a shivering skeletal finger. Um, uh, Let's pull away. Should I pull away? I think so. Let's pull away. You step away out of his reach. He blinks, then smiles. Oh, I'm very sorry, he says. I rarely deal with the leaving. Corpses are not quite so bashful. He flaps his hand at you. I remember you now, of course. Old Siriza once saw you out of the corner of her eye. A week before his accident, old Ulori Mar sold you a small bag of, uh, sugar-dusted almonds. But those aren't the only two. No, you drift through countless lives, altering and ending them, never leaving a name. He draws in his breath. Oh, I can stand mysteries. Love them, but can't stand them. Who are you? Um. Hmm. The Changing God. Alijern mutters something inaudible under his breath. Are you? Imbito says, and though, and though he covers his mouth with his hand, you see his sly smile. I do hope you've told your cult that you're, you've returned, and we'll simply, they will simply be delighted to see you. He clears his throat. So, what brings you to the chapel of the Dendro Ahur? You are not, child, he thinks, but so bold to claim you are. What an interesting cast-off. Yeah, I figured that something interesting would happen there. Uh, and that's why I li that's why I lied. Let's keep up the facade over here, uh, and let's keep you know maybe we can we're gonna be able to get something out of him if we entertain him for a little bit while being interesting. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's that's actually something I came here for uh, the murder. Let's see. Oh yeah, a sculptor told me that uh, your people may have found a man killed by a strange creature. Yes, he says. I believe I know the poor man. Dry as a leaf. Hollow as a neg shell. Barely any mind left in there at all. He clucks his tongue. Inspect him at your leisure. He's the one with the charred skin on his brow. Making a note. Okay, that's good. Now I don't know how much. Uh, I don't know much more about him. He says, chuckling. Though I can assure assure you, we plumbed the depths of his mind and body for answers. But I seem to recall seeing him before. Probably not through my eyes, mind you. In Cliff's Edge, he was coming out of a building near the surgical parlor. I I think that's what it's supposed to mean. I don't know. Yeah, let's go with surgical because I can pronounce that word. Uh, so tell me about your cult. We worship the great Queen Sarlavun, Lady of Maggots, Goddess of Entropy, and Guardian of the Empty Barrier, he says, then pauses, tapping a muddy tooth thoughtfully. Although worship is the wrong word, perhaps. He points at, to the altar nearby. It displays a skull with flat, unforgiving eyes buried in its hollow sockets. She waits on the other side of death with her billions of squirming children. They devour whatever passes into their realm, and rightfully so. Everyone must eat, his eyes twinkle fondly. 
But whatever she and her children eat is lost forever, and so the Dendrohur work to preserve their minds and the mysteries of mortals before death claims them. We hold their shrill little thoughts in our minds and let them tumble around as they will. He shivers. It feels marvelous. Oh, really? Uh, so, yeah, that means that they're basically like a library. So if I could ask them some questions, well, actually not about the Dendrohur, but mm, let's ask about that later. Tell me about yourself. Oh, there isn't much to tell. I've spent most of my years in this little chapel, he says, ca casting a fond look around. The Dendrohur has rather consumed my life. <laughs> consumed my... I'd, I'll remember... I'll have to remember that one. Is he laughing in his thoughts? Hmm. Consumed... Yeah. So, um... Why did... Why did you join? Well... Uh, that is a good question. A very good question. I congratulate you on asking it. He rubs his hands together with a papery sound. I'm afraid, however, that outsiders rarely understand what calls us to the danger of hood. So, with apologies, I do think I will... Uh, I do not think I will answer. Okay. Uh, I'd still like to know why you joined... And why I would love to tell you, he snaps, and it, it is clear that he would. He says, and it doesn't snap, he says, but it is rather tangled in the mysteries of our order. I simply cannot indulge you. Again, my apologies. Okay, well, that's totally fine. Can I ask you something else? Um, about the Dendro Ahur? Lovely! This may surprise you, but we rarely get curious visitors. Most people seem quite nervous about us. He, <laughs> well, w w with, some, with some reason, he wets his cracked, cracked lips and waits your questions with polite interest. Okay, so he's, not, he's a nice guy, I think. Maybe a little bit crazy, maybe a little bit socially detached, but that's totally okay, right? Uh, so, what is the purpose? I mean, I guess we know that, uh, so that's, again, yeah. What does your cult's name mean, anyway? The, the old man's eyes dart from side to side and he leans in. Nobody knows, he whispers, delighted. It's a mystery. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, uh, that actually is a little bit, uh, is a little bit ironic, but yeah, it's, yeah, it is. How long have the Dendro Hood existed? Centuries, he declares, though how many, I couldn't say. We aren't devoted to paper records, as you might imagine. We prefer keeping them in our heads. He runs his tongue along the edge of his rotting teeth. Also, and this is slightly embarrassing, none of us managed to eat our founder. He simply disappeared one day. Can you imagine? Oh, really? Uh, who founded your cult? A man named Melmoth Leviarm, he says in size. I do wish one of us had managed to eat him. That sounds really gruesome, but it's how they transmit knowledge. It's, it's, it, it, is, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, so I'm actually going to write it down over here, because if I can track this guy down later, or the memories of him, then uh, hopefully the game won't have to tell me that, oh, I remember it's the... You know what I mean? The game might tell me that I remember him from by this line over here, but it might not, so I'll have to draw the connections myself, so I wrote it down. Um, how do you preserve humanity's knowledge? Oh, I thought everyone knew that, he, he says, surprised. We eat the flesh and organs of corpses to assimilate their minds. Then he trills off, noticing your expression. What? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was more interested in the process of your methods. Uh, the process than your methods. Ah, fellow scholar, he says. Well, it's quite simple and impossibly complex at the same time. He points to the various hoses and chambers adorning his robes. We do not chew on the corpses, of course. That, that would be quite messy and lethal, most likely. Humans are a diseased bunch. Our suits... Oh... Lethal for you. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense, actually. Humans are a diseased bunch. Our suits liquefy dead flesh, extracting the information contained within. Then we feed upon this, or enriched flesh. It becomes part of us. Okay. At any rate, we scour the streets for bodies, left unclaimed anyway. We bring them here and lay upon uh, lay them upon the beers. He's, the, his sweeping hands direct your attention to the still shrouded figures lying about the chamber. Yeah, I, 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 I've been there. When, oh, that's why they, they're kind of... They removed all of the things from... from like all the flesh from, our, from the face or from the head. So that, that's, they're in the process of eating them, I think. Maybe. When a body is ripe, with unplugged secrets, we gather about it and taste it together. Let a lifetime of thoughts fill around us like little fish. He smacks his lips happily. That's... That's quite interesting, actually. Oh, it is, he says, and dangerous, of course. It does, um, drive us all the slightest bit mad. Well, <laughs> yeah, he purses his lips like he's given away a naughty secret. But it's worth it, even so. Yeah, I, I can definitely f understand what that is. I mean, we've seen that so far on me, myself, Colonel RPG. The fact that I can read their minds, it kind of gets me a little bit confused as to if they said what they said or if they talked 
uh, or if if they uh, just thought it. Um, so it's just that might be the slight bit of madness that he's talking about, just memories, because he does, you know, it's apparent madness anyway. Uh, just oh, I, I know you, or maybe it's somebody I ate or something like that, you know. Uh, so it's interesting like that. Uh, but yeah, I I'm looking for um, I'm helping Folsom investigate some trouble in the underbelly. Can I can I ask you some questions? Of course, he says, and do tell Folsom hello for me. We are dear friends. He raises a finger. Well, he frowns more than I smile, but we do have a grand time whenever we meet, which is often. Oh, really? Um, uh, yeah, that's quite interesting. I like. I'd like to question your acolytes. Would that be all right? Oh, can't allow it, I'm afraid, he says with a thin smile. Not without reason. They're young and easily distracted from the path I've laboriously carved before them. Perhaps another time? Mmm. Mmm. I'm thinking... I really don't think this guy would lie to me, but then again, he would. I don't know. I don't know him well enough. Uh, so one of Folsom's protégés was murdered. Do you know anything about it? Uh, not a thing, he says, then grins. Why? Am I a suspect? Uh... Maybe. Keeping your counsel, he says, nodding sagely. Very wise. Keeping your own counsel, he says. Very wise, very, very wise. Uh, are you sure you don't know anything about the murder of Folsom's protege? I don't. <sighs> I wish I did. Even in the best of times, Folsom is such a surely dinner companion. I can only imagine his mood now. Dinner companion? Huh. Hmm. Okay, uh, then... I'm done talking about my investigation for now. So soon, he says, folding his hands. Very well. Okay, so I can br come back later if I have more information. Let's see what this is. This altar is made entirely of human bones with a carved skeletal head mounted above. Live maggots wringle in its empty eye sockets, which I assume they buy and put in there. Or they could just extract from the bodies around. Let's see. The corpse of an elderly man lies under the shroud. His face is peaceful, and you see no obvious cause of his death. A teenage girl lies dead on his slab. Most of her bones are shattered, suggesting that she fell from a great height. Okay, so let's, um, can I talk to these guys again and just have a different dialogue than before? Um, well, that's that, I guess. This guy might be a, might be like a, a path for something, because he'll open up if I know what interests him, but... I don't, for right now. Hints of exposed bone push against the cloth over this corpse. I'll left, remember lift, that. Lift the shroud. You carefully move the shroud to the side. There's no way around it. This man was a cast-off, and it would be hard for him to be deader. His flesh is papery, desiccated. His tattoo, or rather, the charred remains of it, has burned through his skin and into the bone beneath. And of course, there is the matter of his charred eye sockets and his horrified, gaping mouth. Parts of the corpse are missing, remnants of an aborted dendro feast. You aren't surprised they stopped. Hmm. Why? Why did they stop? Parts of the corpse. Why? Why did they stop? Why am I not surprised? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I figured this this would have been a cast off because it is it was the it was the uh, the sorrow. So I imagine the sorrow is trying to kill all the cast offs or something like that or whatever. Uh, let's examine the corpse again, see if there's anything different. Again, your eyes are drawn to the remnants of the cast-off statue. It looks like it burst into flame when he died, burning right through his skin and into the skull beneath. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Let's touch the, the tattoo and take a little bit of damage. The last thing you remember before your fingertip grazes the tattoo is a rising buzz. Time stutters and breaks. Panting softly, you awaken, leaning against the beer for support. Your arm burns, your temples throb, and white static claws at the corners of your vision. Someone was screaming in that lightless, timeless void. You remember that much, but it wasn't you. None of the dendro are looking your way. Really? Was it that guy that I just touch? Did he get stuck or something? In, in time? In a time pocket? Something? I, I don't I have no idea. Let's have a chat with him and see if I know anything about, more about that. So, uh, um, I have some questions, are you sure? Yeah, doesn't, don't really have anything from him, I don't think. Unless that guy's gonna know something. Oh, I can talk to him? Uh, mm, yeah, can't, can't say anything. What about this guy? Can I t tell him about things, about that thing? Uh, so, if I opened up, nah, yeah. Okay, so I can't figure out what he wants. But maybe with another skill we could, or maybe? I mean, persuasion could also 
work. A lot of these, a lot of these dialogues seem to be a little bit short for you know, just probably for other skill sets and all that, just for us to explore these characters a little bit more. But for right now, I think we just need to find where Matkina is, uh, which of course is going to be an interesting proposition. We can go to Government Square. We actually should go to Government Square right away. Um, that is not our current objective, though. Actually, no, no, let's not go to Government Square. Let's go back to the uh, the guy, the, the, the painter. Uh, so, he was screaming... Yeah, the painter hopefully will like, would like to know what we just told him. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Hey, Crooked Kick. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a kind of a hard name to say. Crooked Kick. Eh, just a lot of kickish. Where are, where are we going? Oh, am I in the right spot? Manthpa. I talked to this guy. It's been a while, though. I did talk to him, didn't I? Hey, man. Can I? Yeah. This lissom Jack looks down on his luck, judging from his bare feet and dusty jerkin, but he takes in his surroundings with a hopeful gaze. As you approach, he smiles and throws out his arms in greeting, uh, which reveals the tools of his trade on his belt. Oh, how now, help meet? Got any? He stops as he, as he sees Tibir with you. Tibir, he bellows. Can't, good to see you. Last I heard, you and Riss were running from the levees. Slipped him again, hey? Well, this is your new crew? Looking for an in-and-out man? I'm free at the moment and ready, to be, and ready and able to do some crimes. Two old friends, he says. They gotta have some work for me. Two old friends, huh? Manth, my boy, always joking, says Tibir. He says through gritted teeth. And so loudly, he puts an arm around the young man's neck and snugs him, around, uh, snugs him in a little too tight. Someday, someone going to hear one of your loud jokes and call the watch on you and me. And no, this... Uh, this is not my new crew. This is my friend, who I am helping find his way around the pitfalls of our great city. And he turns to me. Manth is actually the most honest boy in Sagas Cliffs, aren't you, Manth? <laughs> he swallows. I, I, I guess, why, yes, I am. They don't come much honester than Manthba. I, I pretty much just sit around all day thinking of ways I could be more honest. Oh, that tattooed fellow isn't the guy I knew. When, when am I going to learn? Hmm, so he knew the... Hmm, maybe, I don't know. Maybe he knew another... Another, uh... uh another cast-off. Or maybe he actually knew the Changing God. Tibir's meaty palms cover man's mouth. That's fine, lad. That's fine! He smiles at you. You know, Manth has the most dangerous job in Saga's Cliffs. He's a window washer. Hangs out over the sea faces of those cliffs, cliff houses and scrubs away without a care. And if that weren't enough, when he's not working, he's down here in the underbelly, helping people find their way around. Go on, just ask him. He knows everything about the place. Oh, that's alright, says Manth, uh, Manth at uh, Tibir's left end. Ask me anything. You want to hear about the people who live here? Or maybe the sticker tunnels, or the manufactory, or those crazy dendro hood bastards? Really? Are they crazy? Tell me about them. Uh, well, the cannibals? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think they just do it just so they can be crazier than anybody else. I know they got some kind of mumbo-jumbo reason for eating dead folks, but I, I just think they just like making people squirm, you know? Mm, yeah, I think he's just gonna tell me about this place. I probably should have talked to him before. How did I miss him? Was he not here? Um, yeah, tell me... Give me your general take on the underbelly. Eh, well, it's the bottom of the ladder. As they say around here, there ain't no more down to go. But that's a good thing, right? Means you've got nowhere to go but, nowhere to go but up. A passing thought dims his cheery expression. Unless you drown and, or get swallowed by the bloom or something. Yeah, tell me about the bloom. I... Uh, I can't. I, just a big secret right there. I, I'm, I think this is just actually something quite uh, important for the setting, and people who know the setting will know exactly what that is. But, uh, yeah, we'll probably just have to figure it out later. Um, so tell me about the people here. He blows out his cheeks. Well, I won't talk about everyone. There's a lot of us here. But I'll, ha I'll hit the highlights. Or lowlights, I guess. Uh, he starts to count them off on, on his fingers. There's Fulsum, of course. He runs things around here. Not officially, mind you. He's just the sharpest... Shagan with the hardest crew is all. Machella, who sells bits and bobs at her stall. Malk, the uh, the meatmonger, who sells, um, well, meat. Uh, tell Malk I sent you if you pay him a visit. He gives a shin for each referral. Uh, let's see, there's uh, Aligern, the Aeon Priest, who, uh... Oh, there you are, Aligern. I, <laughs> I was just about to say wonderful things about you. Yeah, I'll bet. Go on. Uh, sure. Uh, th then there's uh, Mapper, crazy... Craig Carker, who's covered in maps, and, uh, well, I suppose that's it. Uh, what with the Crooked Kick dead? What? Crooked crook, crook Kick is dead? Wait a minute, what? He spreads his hands. Yep, that's all that's worth mentioning. Wait a minute, Crooked Kick is alive? I saw her. How can I ask about that? Oh, I can't... Oh. What? This is the bug. This is a bug. This has got to be a bug. This is 
Gotta be for something. Oh, that's not good. If it is a bug, it's just a spoiler. Is she gonna die? I suppose that's it. What with crooked kick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's dead. Or what? I I don't know. I it's gotta be either an oversight where she was meant to be killed, or because she's right there. I we just saw her. I just said hello to her. Hmm. So um, what do you know about the sticker tunnels? Well, they've dug them all over the place around here. You only see the ends of them since uh, they fill them with loose dirt that only they can dig through. Yeah, I actually need to go back up there uh, and talk to them and just get them uh, to get skeked to bring me somewhere else. Um, so, what's the manufactory? Oh, the heart of the industry in Sagas Cliffs. People think only the crazy and the crooked live down here in the underbelly, but if you want to see the hardest working people in the city, go look in at the furnaces. That's real work, that is. Ah, poor saps, he thinks. What's the point of honest work if it doesn't get you out of this hole? Eh, well, it's true, I guess. I mean, if they like it here, I guess it doesn't... It, well, um... So, do you know anything about the murder of Folsom's protege? Well, now that is some spooky effluvium, and no mistake. Circle of blood on the wall, but they all found of... All, but all they found of the Vic was the skinless hand? Well, it happened in that alcove on the other side of this structure, if you want to see it. Yeah, I've been there. Um, do you know where I can find someone named Matkina? Oh, the White Death? Huh, you went crazy, are you? He lifts his hands placatingly. Sorry, sorry, none of my business. I couldn't tell you where she is. But you might want to talk to Mapper. He's squatting in one of the shanties down there. And if there's any place she can hide, he'd know about it. Okay, well, thank you very much. I'll see you later. Uh, keep it high, Kit. Or sit. I don't I suppose. What is... Crooked Kick is right there. How is she dead? I think that, I think they might have forgotten about the... About the dialogue or something. Or this could be a bug. What's new? She says. Uh, so... Yeah. I have no idea what that is. No idea whatsoever. We talked to the headless men before. But anyway, uh, we need to go back to uh, Circus Main. Circus Main? It's Circus... It's a main thing. Oh, I took the... Oh, that's why I missed it. Because I never went down there. And of course, that's where... Um, Tibir has his... Is that Tibir's place or is that Aligern's place? No, that's Aligern. Aligern, I think we would find him down here if we had taken Calistegi. Or oh, Calist Calistige. Let's go with Calistige. Uh, I, I, Calistege. How do I pronounce? Oh, did I pronounce her name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I think we'd find him in there if uh, we had taken her instead of him. Uh, we're going in the wrong direction. Let's go this way. And of course, it's nighttime now because of reasons. And that's Paya and Kelenor still over there. And Yerim, how's it going, guys? Do your thing and let's have a chat with this sculpture and see if he says something. Zalfi glowers blanket blankly at the sky, his battered fingers sculpting the air, his lips moving silently. Uh, have you made any progress? None. I need to know who the victim was. Uh, okay, so I am asking the same things. Well, I found him, but I don't really know much about that. Well, I guess we can't complete that quest. Well, it's not actually a quest, because I looked for it. It's not actually a quest, is it? Sorrow Spray. It is, actually. Investigate the victim's house in Cliff's Edge. That's not here, is it? This is not Cliff's Edge. No. So, it is a quest. We just need to go to the right place. That's Cliff's Edge. That's where, of course, we have the Fifth Eye Tavern, where we spent a whole lot of time in there. And uh, we still have that quest to do, the adversary. I wonder if it's related to other quests as well. Huh. I mean, it would make some sense that it would, you know, for them not to isolate quests like this is for this, this is for that, and just get you in a bunch of trouble just from a single quest to do. That that makes sense. But anyway, we are out of time for the day, so we're going to explore this beautiful sunny place in the next episode. For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Torment Tides of Numenera. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.